everyone, Donald Leggett, and welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined from Florida today by Harold Braun, Chairman and CEO of Guidant, 100% owned by AIM listed Tech Capital, and Guidant specializes in software for autonomous vehicles and drones. Welcome, Harold. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Hey, Donald. Good morning to London from beautiful Miami. <laughs> from beautiful, yes, we're seeing how beautiful uh, Miami is. <laughs> now, I understand that you're a specialist in software for autonomous vehicles and drones, but nevertheless, I'm going to start by asking you about shock absorbers. Uh, you, you, uh, Guidance have just bought a patent for shock absorber technology for autonomous vehicles. Now, is there nothing comparable available? Why, why, was, it, why was it such a good deal? Why could you not let it pass by? Yes. Yeah, I think you mentioned it. You know, we couldn't let it pass by because, you know, it doesn't really, uh, is a, it is not a part of our core business on one side. On the other side, it influences uh, um, autonomous vehicles in a way which is very positive for us. So let's now define it first. So it is about regenerative shock absorbers. So uh, that are the shock absorbers which create actually out of vibration and linear movement, they create actually energy. So electricity, for example, which otherwise is wasted, right? And we could use every bit of energy in an autonomous vehicle we can get, right? Normally, you would think about it that it, um, yeah, in the end, it it increases uh, the the distance, right? You can actually go longer, right? So um, uh, you, you know, with a charge. So that that is the that is the ultimate. So it increases the driving range. Yeah. On the other side. Uh, in an autonomous vehicle and also in an AV, but in an autonomous vehicle in particular, we use uh, a lot of energy because there, it is in principle a computer, right? It is a computer on wheels. And you can imagine the processing power of the uh, computers inside the car, they use a lot of energy and we can use every single bit of energy we can get. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's impossible. Therefore, we're thinking about, okay, fine. Um, if this is kind of um, an additional energy source, well, we go for it, yeah? Okay. And that and the, was the, the, somehow the reason behind it, right? And by the way, it has also a very nice, let's say, um, uh, side uh, effect because it's, uh, it's, um, it, it is sustainable, it's cost effective. It is sustainable energy, and then of course it increases also the white comfort because I think the what we saw so far on the numbers it uh, it has uh, some very good um, uh, measurements, you know, to increase also the white comfort. So it has nice side effects as well. But our thing is the energy. Uh, all sounds great. What kind of what kind of market might there be for these shock absorbers? You know, is there is there money to be made in the in, in these things? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is, when, when you see the market, I think the global electric vehicle market, and I think it would be possible, so these shocks, right? So I call them regenerative shocks, right? So creating energy. But these shocks could also be used in um, a normal, cost, uh, you know, combustion engine uh, cars, right? So, but when I look only to the EV market worldwide, in uh, 2019, it was 160 billion. And it has a cargo of 20, 22, 23 percent from our market research, and it goes up to 800 billion by 2027. So it's a huge market. And when you calculate it down, then you can address, and that would be the addressable market only, and that would be without trucks, it would be around 64 million shock absorbers per year, right? Well, and then I'm not talking about the pricing uh, yet, but the market, the addressable market would be in the order of 60 to 70 million shock absorbers per year. So it's a, it's a pretty sizable, good market, right? And is there much competition? Is there anything else out there that's, that's comparable? Um, I, we, we have seen um, several patterns um, we have seen also some car manufacturing, um, you know, working with this kind of shock absorbers. But I think from what we um, um, did and how we evaluated this pattern and also the technology is that we have some unique uh, differences. 
um, um, uh, two existing regenerative uh, shock absorbers, electric, electricity producing shock absorbers. Well, um, the proof is in the pudding, right? So uh, we, we have to see uh, in test, um, that's what we're doing right now with, with major car manufacturers in the world. We have to see how the test goes. And they are, they are, uh, they are at the moment uh, in the lab in uh, one of um, the biggest car manufacturers in the world. And we will see how they stack up uh, to products they have tested before. Yeah. And I see competition all the time positive, right? I think we have some unique ways, uh, or this particular shock absorbers has some unique ways uh, to create energy, uh, which is different than what we saw in the market. But, you know, um, competition is all the time good. So, and we are up to the test in the labs. So you're testing with the major OEM at the moment? Um, yes, so the, the, the test will start soon. So we are um, in the discussion um, of uh, sizing, uh, you know, um, uh, the shock absorbers and have a particular um, kind of um, um, measures what they, uh, what they require to put in their AV. And then uh, with that AV, they are testing it in, in, in their labs. Yeah, so this is, um, this is uh, planned, right, and will start soon. Fantastic. Um, and again, this is, uh, this is not a small, uh, you know, car manufacturers. We are very uh, happy, uh, you know, that, they, that we uh, piqued their interest, yeah. Absolutely. And as you say, the proof is in the pudding. So, yeah, uh, exactly. Talk, yeah. Talking about proof, proof in puddings, um, you have lots of other exciting core technologies which have, uh, you have patents for and are developing. So pick me, pick me the, the, the two of the leading patents, the most exciting ones, which are most likely to come to market soonest, and talk me through those. So this, this of course, is an exciting patent, what we just talked about. <clears throat> but um, when, when we see our business in guidance, and we call it uh, with our tagline, autonomous intelligence, right? So it is about focusing on software development for autonomous vehicle using uh, artificial intelligence algorithm to improve the safety of such cars. So the adoption rate of autonomous vehicle is not that great so far, right? And, um, but it will come, so the predictions uh, are there that, uh, you know, we will have in the next couple of years and, you know, uh, exponential growth um, uh, you know, uh, projections in different technologies are huge. We predict that there will be a, a major focus in the future on autonomous vehicles. Well, we have seen that now through the, through the COVID-19 times. And then, um, I'm not talking about pivot, but we said, okay, fine. Before we use or we focus on monitoring and control autonomous vehicles like cars, we have to look and focus a little bit on, on terrestrial or land-based drones. So some call them land-based drones, not the flying drones, right? So the land-based drones, yeah. which could be, some call them also terrestrial drones, some call them robots, right? Which in principle deliver um, a zero touch delivery of goods. Right, so that would be one thing. So transport goods from A to B to C to D, right? And you have seen that with uh, companies like Starship and other um, uh, companies. So small little uh, vehicles going through the city and um, you know, and and and, and uh, delivering uh, goods or you know uh, food or whatever. So they are there. So this is not this is not science fiction. This is reality right now. And you see in the U.S., in different cities, um, this uh, land-based drones. Well, there's a law in the U.S., and the law requires that when you operate an autonomous vehicle on public roads, there need to be some sort of human intervention. And this some sort of human intervention can be done in two different ways. Either you have a driver in that car, well, in a land-based drone, there is no place for a driver, number one. Mm -hmm. But in a car, there would be an AV car, there would be a, a place for a driver. Or you are going to get rid of the driver and you do it remotely. 
and uh, that's what we're focusing on so that we that we have the ability with guidance and with our software in our first use case we call it um, uh, you know remote monitoring and control center to monitor an AV and then when it gets into trouble or it's about to get into trouble and their AI comes in artificial intelligence comes in that we somehow paint that um, or alert in a map where this autonomous vehicle is, that we alert that with my, maybe it was green before, now it turns yellow, before it turns red, right? And boom, we will see then directly uh, the video streaming inside the car, outside the car. When it gets into trouble, we can take over control over the vehicle before it gets into a mishap, and we can tr control that vehicle remotely and get it either back on track or uh, out of mishap. And so that far, is actually the core technology. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And how far down the road are you in terms of uh, development? Uh, do you have people, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, as companies uh, signing contracts with you? What sort of state of play are you at? Yes. So uh, as, as you know, I mean, we started just one and a half year ago, right? So um, uh, with, with, with this. And um, I think we are. Uh, we have a roadmap. We have clear company principles. Number one. Number two. We have a clear roadmap and what we want to do. And of course, as a startup going out of stealth mode, you, you have also to make sure that you are open enough to see where the market is going. That you know, as I just said, right, with the zero touch delivery was of course a huge push uh, during the COVID-19 times because people wanted to have the grocery stores and they didn't want to touch anything, right? And they wanted to have that delivered uh, to your um, uh, home. So that of course are uh, things which we have to react to. Yes, we have people um, in the company, mostly software uh, developers and also AI specialists, which by the way are not easy to find, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, um, and um, we have those, we have a clear roadmap. The first thing, what, and important is also that this is a complex situation. This is a complex um, um, product to bring to market. It in, in, in principle, it is software, right? In a car which has to have computers, right? And have to have the right energy, you know, to speed this uh, computers up. And, and, and so it's a complex thing, meaning, you can only work with an ecosystem and with ecosystem partners. You need the regulator a part of this. You need the EV manufacturers in this ecosystem. You need also the remote monitoring and control people and the software developers in that ecosystem. You need all sorts of cross-functional um, companies in that ecosystem. And that's what we're creating as well. So you might have seen some press releases uh, and you will see also uh, going forward some press releases uh, where we announce partnerships in that ecosystem. And we will also participate in innovation labs. So we are ecosystem partners also there to see what part of the uh, autonomous vehicle, artificial intelligence um, um, universe they are addressing. And that is something very important. So we have to build an ecosystem. And in that ecosystem, we're looking at how can we, first of all, make sure that we have a very secure, safe connectivity. Very important. This autonomous vehicle has to be on a mobile network. So it has to be an, a an EV, an electro vehicle, number one. Therefore, the connections to the shock absorbers. Number two, it is an IoT device. It is an Internet of Things device. It's a computer on wheels. It's in principle a computer on wheels or, a, you know, it has to be connected. So we, we supply and we provide a secure, safe connectivity to this AV, number one. Then we stream the videos to a monitoring center so that we know exactly what's going on, where's the vehicle, the telemetrics of the vehicle, and, and the then also where looks, it is. looks like that image which you're sitting in front of. I, exactly, that looks like where we then image the, uh, the, um, the, um, the, um, the cars, the inside, the outside, the environment, right? 
and then uh, make sure that we can take after the monitoring and the video streaming over a public or a even more secure network. So, I'm, uh, so that's what we're developing as our next pattern, by the way, uh, that we then take over or ca- uh, have the ability to take over control of that vehicle and get it out of mishap. Right. Okay. So I understand so you're, you're, are, at the, you're, mm-hmm. you're in, the, in the process of, of buying patents and developing patents for yourself. All that takes money, it takes funding, it, uh, you need to be capitalized. Um, where, where does all that come from? Yes. So uh, there, the, um, the I, there was a lot. Yeah, but, but your previous answer, I didn't completely answer because I, <laughs> I was going into different areas to see the, the complexity. Uh, do we have partnerships? Do we working with customer? Yes. Did we sign a customer yet? No. Do we have a pipeline uh, talking to customers? Yes. We're talking actually to the largest, the, to the biggest, uh, or to uh, one, how do I put this? To the company or to a customer which has the largest deployment in the U.S. of autonomous vehicles. We're talking with them right now because what they want to do is they want to have tail operations, right? And we see in every RFP, request for proposals, the request for tail uh, operations. And we're talking also to smart city um, uh, customers. So that's to the customer portion. And what do you think, what are the most exciting things that you might be announcing in the next six months, nine months, perhaps? <clears throat> the most exciting thing is that um, our team, is so excited about that area, and I think you need excited people, right? So I'm I'm coming from a leadership um, um, uh, kind of uh, you know background uh, over the last 10, 15 years, where I led an enormous amount of people and in big companies and small companies, publicly traded. So I did not develop software anymore, but I did 30 years ago, hmm. and that whole thing has changed. Today, it is about speed. It is about speed to market, and it is about when you talk to someone and said, hey, I have this idea there, can we do this and this? And then when you have in the next morning a layout of software which can do that, what you just said six hours ago, that, is, that was unseen previously. So that means the most exciting thing is that you have software developers working in an area which totally excites them. And then using this AI, we had AI also 10 years ago, we called it learning, uh, learning machines and so on and so forth. But now with all the uh, new components and tools, it is much, much easier uh, to get to software code. So most exciting thing is what I've seen is the software developers creating very, very fast uh, products. Then it is also interesting to see that you uh, very fast can patent this kind of thoughts. We just started another patent, right, ourselves, where we, and I touched on it earlier a little bit, where you can actually have uh, a safe access, a, a kind of um, a mobile access to that car, which is very important because you lose connectivity, you have nothing, you can do nothing. So the good news is this field is so wide open that you can patent um, um, an idea very fast and it, will be, it is also granted very fast. That shows you it is a new asset class. It's a new technology. That's the most exciting thing, that you have developers excited to create a new product in a new asset class in an ecosystem environment. Thank you very much indeed for joining us there, Harold Braun, Chairman and CEO of Guidant. For more interviews like this one, please do subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel. And my final thought, please do stay safe in these difficult times.